uh, you know, we sort of told it together and I got a better understanding of the business. My mother decided to take a step back and, and give full control to my sister and myself. And that also helped because we could make our mistakes. We could, she was a sounding board for us more than someone being the inner faces and saying, what the heck are you guys doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. So that was sort of the, you know, that helped us, you know, uh, to, to get to a point where I could understand the business and I could actually make meaningful full contributions. You know what I mean? I mean, I still can't cut a lamb, make sausages <laughs> or burgers or anything like that. You know, I still can't do it. But I, I, I'm a problem solver, so I'm good at in terms of if something goes wrong or if a client wants to develop something, I, I'm good at stuff like that, you know, so I can develop something. Beautiful, man, beautiful. Um, you said you don't cut lamb, but that's the essence of a businessman. You roll with the punches, you, you, you make do with what you have. And maybe tell us and listeners, what's your greatest lesson that being in business uh, has taught you, perhaps? The first thing I'd say is that, you know, you got to respect the people that you work with. I mean, at the end of the day, you can't be everywhere at the same time. I'm sitting here at Nando's, I've got a, a butchery business, you know, whatever else. I can't be in two places at the same time. So firstly, you know, you have to understand and respect the people that you work with because they are your business, you know what I mean? And it's about empowering people, dedicating, giving people responsibilities, you know, giving them support structures to ensure that they're successful when they are implementing those strategies that you want to implement, you know what I mean? And, 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 and that's, that's the first point I would say, you know, I said, I mean, you know, when you are a, when you are a leader, you're only as good as your team, you know, um, so that's number one. Number two is your partners, you know, respect for your partners and understanding and clear communication and transparency with your partners. Many f family businesses fail. I think third generation, so a lot of statistics out there about third generation family, they fail at the third generation. I think a lack of transparency, a common vision, you know, those type of things are critical. So your partners making, understanding what is your strengths, what is your weaknesses, being humble enough to accept that, you know what I mean, and, and deal with that, you know, and surround yourself with your partners and your staff that will complement you and, and, and as a team, work as a team to make sure that you are successful in implementing your business. Once you've got those two steps into place, the third thing I'd say is that you must be passionate about what you do. Of course. Right? You've got to be passionate, you've got to love what you do. So, I mean, you know, I love pharmacy, I love the butcher, I love Nando's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, uh, uh, there's a lot of things that I love and I'm, I'm like a... Are you like <laughs> oh, shit. I love my wife, of course. I love you, baby. <laughs> So is that passion that drives you, the passion uh, and the combination of all these, um, it is, it's simple values that you're describing, mm -hmm. communication, respect, passion, love, mm -hmm. all those sorts of things is things we should be doing in our normal lives as well. Absolutely. And uh, uh, just to latch on to the main point of why we're here, the passion and the love for Nando's, we feel that, Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe take us. Oh, well, I should just say first. <laughs> I have to interject and say Zahir's bio is very clear that he's a father, he's a husband, firstly. Let's not make the same mistake again. <laughs> and he's a father and he's a Nando's lover. <laughs> so that, that, that's, that's the main reason. And he's actually traveling tomorrow. Okay. If I may say that. And yeah. he had to do this interview today. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of, uh, you know, before people attach themselves to franchise and to the brands, maybe tell us what 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 attracted you to the Nando's brand. I mean, we all know it as South Africans, we're proud of it. Uh, but personally, to you, what it drew you to it? Because I know you guys are involved with the other branches as well. Yes. Um, so maybe uh, what what inspired that involvement? Do you know, like this is it's, it's such an amazing brand. I'm not just saying it; it really is. You know, if you look at how they develop their business. Number one is also around people. So the first thing is that they develop their business around people. You know, uh, you get, they call, you're not called, you called staff, it's called Nandokas. Or your, your leader of your, your manager business is called the Patrao. You know, you know it's, it's amazing how at every level, and, and they give you opportunities to grow your staff. You know, they've got, uh, they've got like these, these hatch, they call something called hatchlings. You know, where you can actually, be, if you start off in Nando's, you can go into this thing called Hatchlings and you can become like, you know, yeah. so I can progress your role and that type of thing. So firstly, the way they develop staff, it's amazing. Secondly, the culture of this business. It's about quality and giving the best to their customers. Everything is just about giving the best. From the food safety, uh, from the back, 
uh, with the food safety controls in place to the front where you know they've got things called like mystery shoppers where people come into your store and they come to buy food and they come to the dish they just smile at me but they're actually from HQ <laughs> <laughs> exactly you know so the whole experience measure the whole experience you know what I mean from start to finish the equipment that they use at the back it's specially designed and approved by Nando's in terms of how can we give this customer experience the best possible experience you know what I mean Nando's is now an international brand it doesn't happen by accident you know and for this brand to, to have come to that level it says a lot about what African businesses can contribute on the global stage provided you've got those things in place you know what I mean you, and, and you know everything that they do it's about giving the customer the best possible experience you know what I mean and serving the best possible uh, product I suppose it's also the ethos of the company yes. something uh, I particularly I mean uh, observe it's um, that I mean you've got beautiful art in your store it's actually something that rotates um, through the through the different stores and Nando's itself has invested quite a substantial amount of money in art yes absolutely I mean if you look at the, the support of local artists, yes. it's un unbelievable. And what you must remember is that if there's a store in London, yes. and there's an opportunity for South African artists for their work to go in a London store, Australia... So it's basically exhibiting in different countries. Exactly. You know what I mean? I mean, from the tiles, the tiles are not, they bought, didn't buy by a company, it's handmade tiles by a South African company. You know what I mean? So, it's extraordinary. Yeah, it is. And all these things put together, it's promoting South African uh, brands overseas, you know? So I, I made a joke with you earlier when we were coming in. I said, I wonder when the store is going to be on top, Berlin. Yes. Because uh, if you guys have a look at the uh, the art, please make your way here to the Vienna waterfront, to the Nando's here, from Mitriaz and his team. But look at the art and, and admire it. Um, it's so beautiful, intricate. You, you explained to me earlier about um, uh, the, the canvas that was painted, but then someone uh, did beading afterwards. Why don't yes. you just explain that to, to, the, to the audience uh, to understand the depth uh, with which the brand wants to take uh, their stores, basically. Yes, so, for example, we've got two pieces of, of art on our wall over there uh, by an artist called Daniela Moody. And uh, she's well-renowned. She's uh, exhibiting at the Zeitzmacher, as I said earlier. And what they did is they actually, she, she would do the, it's a collaboration between her and, and the, a, a, a company called the Quebecer Art Trust and basically what happens is she does the, the painting design and then this Quebecer uh, uh, they basically come with a beading and they bead over parts of her artwork and it gives such extraordinary texture to her artwork it's beautiful to look at you know it's unique and it's that type of thing you know where you get a, a well-known artist with an African beading company collaborating together exposing them to those type of things it's phenomenal where are you going to get something like that you know what I mean and it's a display at the Nando's you know <laughs> yeah. so it's not just about the food you know what I mean so it's, it's it truly a, is an experience basically. it truly is an experience, an experience yes. of all the senses exactly exactly but yes um, touching I mean I would want to go back a bit um, we we are the objective of what we do is of course is to encourage people to live with purpose for the young people out there your success alhamdulillah your passion you're very passionate about your business um, we would like to always you know accredit what our success is to our parents and you speak very passionately about your late dad and your mom um, but how did how did that passion come about uh, how was it instilled in you you know uh, knowing your uh, family business uh, the good hope meat market Hyper. Uh, they're synonymous for good quality. So it's an institution, I suppose, in Cape Town. But quality is something that's always, I think, of, of, of foremost importance in the business. Right. So can you just maybe touch on that? I think the, the first thing is when you experience someone like people like my mom, my dad, uh, you know, to see how they actually walk through life, you know, the, the way they live their life. And it never came easy to me. No, no, it didn't. My, my dad and my mom both had to drop out of school at a very age, early age. My dad wanted to become a doctor. And, um, but they, they had to, through their own circumstances, they had to leave school at a very, very young age. And I think it was mainly because of, you know, the values and the principles that they had instilled in them that they were able to successful. Just a, just a quick story. When my dad actually uh, uh, bought the butcher, because he had a sm very small butcher right next door called uh, Lassie's Butchery. Um, and then the, the, good op, the guy that owned Good op, he wanted to sell the business. One of, one of my dad's employees walked past and overheard that he wanted to sell the business. And he came back and told him, please don't sell the business, come and talk to my dad. Wow. So he came back to my dad and my dad came to speak to him and said, look, I'd like to buy the business. Sure. 
But my, the problem is my dad didn't have any money. He had no money to buy the business. So at the time, you know, they phoned. Uh, so the, the man said, okay, hold on, and who do, who's your family, you know? So he said, you know, someone that my dad knows. Phones, a guy, phones him up with my uncle. Um, and then my uncle, uh, he then basically uh, gave a good reference to my dad. And he says, so he came back to my dad and he said, you know what, I heard such good things about you. I'm going to sell you the business. Even if you've got no money, you, oh, pay, wow. you pay me when you, when you can pay me. Subhanallah. You know what I mean? Now, that's unheard of, you know. And good ops started like that. And well, that's telling of your dad's personality absolutely. and his credibility yes. and his ethics of doing business. 100%. Because we, we're not going to do that to anybody, you know. And even I remember as a young boy, every eat, no matter how tired my dad was, from the butcher, the first thing before he goes home, We'd go to that man's house and go and drop some corn beef and corn tongue and a leg of lamb off at that because my father would never forget him. You understand what I'm saying? I remember every single if we do that, you know? And, you know, I, I think, you know... And your dad would go personally. You wouldn't no, send somebody. No, we'd go personally. We'd, the two of us would go personally to do the uncle and... And you'd see this, you know, you'd see the man interact with his customers, the way he speaks to his customers. My father... I mean, I can never be my father. And this is one thing I want to also say to any young business person who's sort of in a family business of working with your parents, you must, the one thing you must understand is you can never be your, your father or your mother. You know, they, you can try to emulate them as best as you can, you know. But my father used to speak to a customer, he used to know the people's names, their children's names, what the children are studying, what year they're in. He used to know all those things, you know what I mean? So it's incredible to, to witness that firsthand. And my mom as well, she was a philanthropist. You know, she was someone that used to, I mean, used to from even from anywhere she could sell anything to anybody she she was very sickly in her old, uh, in, in, in later years and, she, and people would come to visit her and she'll sell your corporate table to an event yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing <laughs> you know because people would come to visit her but then we walk out to the table you know <laughs> so so it was it was unique just to be in that environment and i mean i must say we're speaking about uh, uh, my family early my wife I mean I'm I'm blessed to have someone in my life you know my, my wife uh, is someone that's incredible she's a rock for me and you know the two of us uh, together are trying to you know make sure that we try to emulate those values together with my sister you know my, my older sister so Nassima your wife corporate tables as well. <laughs> no, she's on her way she's on her way <laughs> but my sister my older sister Nassima I mean if you look at Good Hope I mean I'm so fortunate because I'm surrounded by such strong women characters in my life you know my sister Nasima I always say she's the heart of the business I'm just the guy that's got the LinkedIn profile you know but <laughs> but she's she's actually the heart of the business you know we she worked with my dad I would honestly say good up wouldn't be where it was right now if it wasn't for her you know wow. the two of us working together you know me the ideas guy the marketing guy and she's the one that brings me down to earth and say no that's not gonna work <laughs> you know what I mean well, let's rather do it like this so she's a sensible one you know what I mean so, unsung heroes of yes, every business. Absolutely. Every family has that unsung hero. Yes. Rias, what are you most grateful for today? Besides being filmed by us today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Alhamdulillah, you know, uh, firstly, everything happens to the Qudrat of Allah. Let's not forget that. You know, nothing happens without Allah. I mean, when you get the good times and the bad times, I mean, that you measure yourself in how grateful you are. You know, even in the bad times, you know, we I mean, must never forget that, that things happen for a reason. But I'm so grateful for my parents for for the for firstly what they have left us, not only in terms of the business, but in terms of the legacy. The legacy, you know, it's it's not a burden at all. It's not a burden at all to carry on a legacy if you welcome it and you embrace it with open arms and with flaws and with everything that comes with it. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? So I'm I'm grateful that I've been able to. To have such amazing parents, such amazing family, amazing partners, and to work with such amazing brands, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. But it's also a responsibility that you, you understand you have to impart that onto others. So I'm grateful that I'm able to employ people, you know, I'm grateful that I'm able to empower people, I'm grateful that I'm able to make a contribution where, you know, other, are we in a position to do that, you know. And it's difficult. Some people really want to make a contribution. They give of their time, but they're not able to maybe give uh, financially. And I often say those people, you know, we must be grateful for them for doing the work possible to facilitate that, you know. So I'm grateful to be part of, of something like that. You know?
lovely. No, earlier you mentioned passion and excellence and uh, you speak fondly about your parents and all that. We never really touched about yourself. <laughs> you know, in the beginning we did. So maybe let me ask you this question. How would you describe yourself in three words? <laughs> three words. Um, Liverpool hey. FC. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. So that's number one. <laughs> <laughs> at least they drew over the weekend. <laughs> yeah, so everything... Uh, my whole weekend my, it revolves around Liverpool, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we could have opened the store on Saturday, but we played against Chelsea. Ah, yes. So I said, now we're going to open the store to focus on Chelsea rather. <laughs> so, so Liverpool is, is, is it, it means I'm so passionate about that team. It means so much to me, right? So that's that's something that it's, it's, it's very... Uh, <laughs> very real. <laughs> very important to me. I, I could say two and three Liverpool is a little <laughs> But I, that, I know that's one thing that's good about me. That also, some people know that I'm playing. <laughs> about, about Liverpool. Uh, I think the second thing is that um, you know I I'm, I try to be uh, loyal. I'm very loyal to people I work with. I'm loyal to the people that um, help me become you know not necessarily who I am today, but the people that supported me, uh, whether it's staff or um, many suppliers or anybody. I'm, I'm very loyal. I'm extremely loyal. And. Um, I think I, if I can say, I, I'm someone that, uh, with, I'm saying it with humility, I, I, I try to be uh, kind to people, you know what I mean? I treat people with respect in terms of, I don't judge anybody, uh, whatever, whatever your background is, it doesn't matter to me, I treat everyone the same, so I think that's very important to me, and because I know how hard it was for my dad and my mom to get to a certain level, and uh, you have, to, you know, you have to be very, um, you have to understand that. My dad was a salesperson, before he became the butcher, was a salesperson for Wilson Roundtree. And uh, he said, he often told me, you know, it's very difficult to be a salesperson because when you come and you cold call on someone, you get rejected a lot. You get rejected a lot. So it's something you have to be humble about, you know what I mean? And when people come to sell something to me, at the butcher, for example, you know, a lot of home industry people come, they come sasa. Then, always have this in the back. Of yeah, he always tells me like, you told me take six man, take see if, if it's a buyer, take a six, take six from them, but give him a sale, and they could offer you, and they walk away at least out to sale. You know, oh. my staff is very upset because they have to create barcodes every time. <laughs> There's a new a new acha. Oh my god, we need another acha. But you know what? We found so many gems like that. You know what I mean? I like so that. many gems. Uh, for the 2010 World Cup, right? 2010 World Cup, right? We were one of the official suppliers in 2010 World Cup, right? Okay. So we are German caterers, right? German caterers. FIFA appointed German caterers, and they've never worked with a halal business before. Okay. And they were very upset because they've never worked with halal. Why must everything be halal? But FIFA for for nine stadia was fully halal. So they said to us, okay. But as we start working, they gave me confidence and, and things like that, and uh, they gave me new ideas, new pro. We developed new products, innovative stuff. Man. But then they told me, yes, you know, one day we're looking for something unique, man, to put as a, as a something for people to nibble on, man. You know, have you got any ideas? So I said to him, have you heard of slanger cheese? <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? So, no, so what is slanger cheese? You know, little snacks, you know? So anyway, we, 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 I made them taste slanger cheese. said, this is brilliant, you know? <laughs> and I got this one lady, she supplied nine stadia, hundreds of kilos of slanger cheese. Wow. You know, for the 2010 FIFA World Cup. <laughs> You know what I mean? Never Phenomenal. You know what I mean? No, really this and was you know, never on the FIFA reel. The no, story, no. No, no, no. Okay, so, so, so it was all the stadiums. She did nine. I, I don't know how many stadiums there was. You know, yeah. I think it was more than nine. I think okay. it was 11. Okay. But we did nine, you know? Okay. Okay. So uh, so she gave slanger cheese. I mean, I was saying to the guys, come on, where's the meat orders? Because I'm the most slanger cheese orders. You know? <laughs> <laughs> At some point, it was so cool, you know? Yeah, I don't know if that lady retired now. Right? No, <laughs> so the slanger cheese actually a slide gig. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> exactly. Oh, wow. We don't meet up. Just for the Just for the record. The Russian cheese Russians at uh, the cocktail ones yes. at Grudop is my favorite. Oh, my she so much. She I, I, so much. I haven't tasted it anywhere else in the country. So uh, you know, these are uh, very important. You know, especially with someone that doesn't didn't grow up in the butchery business. So when I when I was there, for a new pharmacy, right? So I, I told myself, look, I I don't know the stuff, but I got in some German people. Never be afraid to ask for help. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
I, I, I invested in getting German people and Dutch people to come here. They spent two weeks here. They explained to me the methodology of how to make things. So we'd look at, uh, I said to them, I don't look at halal products. Tell me about non-halal products. Mm. So they would teach me how to make rations, for example, yes. with pork, you know what I mean? Yeah. But but using beef. Sure. And what is their formulation? What is the what is their recipe? What is the secrets of how to make things? You know what I mean? So I I, I develop yeah. products yeah. like that. Yeah. Yes. That's so so uh, it was basically I'd learn from them in terms of what is their, their fields of expertise of how to make it in a non allow way. And I didn't make it in a halal way, you know what I mean? And that cheese ration there was developed by a German guy. So it's, a, it's not usual, a cheese, no usual cheese ration, you know what I mean? So, and there's many products like that. And that, we, we were able as good hope to get into non-halal companies, supply them with halal product, and they're not even advertising that they're halal because the products were equivalent to what they were getting. Wow. You know what I mean? Simply because of, it's innovative. And, and that's how often if there's a, a, a chain that wants to become halal, they come to us and they ask us, can we develop a halal product? And, I, and if I can't do it myself, I get on the line with these guys to help me through the process. And that's how we come up with a product. Yes, touching on your innovation within business, of course, that's also possibly the reason that you, alhamdulillah, you were fortunate to uh, pick up some awards along the way. Uh, you're referring to the, what was it, the F&B Small Business Award? Yeah. Did you have one? Yeah, so <laughs> that was a crazy story. Custom. Yo, that was a crazy story. Love it. So, <laughs> so yeah, I was nominated for. I don't know who nominated me. Thank you, whoever nominated me. <laughs> Someone nominated me anonymously, right, for this award. So I was so excited, you know. I thought, oh, this is so cool. And um, you know, like the whole Oscar thing, oh, it's, a, it's an honor to be nominated, and that. So it's all crap, right? So <laughs> you want to win because once you once you get nominated, you you want to win. And so what happened was, um, I was nominated. And then now, as a person, then the people come down and they interview you. They, now, they, they interview you, and now there's a shortlist. And I made the shortlist of five. I think it was four or five candidates. And I was like, yo, this is so cool. And then they give you like the brochure, man. Like a few days before the award ceremony, they give you the brochure of who the other candidates are. Because I don't know these people. Oh my God. I saw the other candidates. I was so embarrassed. Kassam. I was so embarrassed because I thought to myself, you know, Look at these other people. Like, <laughs> did I just make up the numbers here right. or what, right? I promise you, I was so embarrassed, right? I thought to myself, this, this is like crazy, this is like so stupid. And then on, to make matters worse, so now my wife and I will fly up uh, on the day of the awards. And this was in Johannesburg? Yes, in Johannesburg. We fly up. And uh, you know, I'm so nervous because I'm, I'm telling her like this is crazy. And I'm looking through the, the in-flight magazine, man. And in the in-flight, one of the nominees is in the in-flight magazine wow. as well. You know? wow. So she's being profiled in there as this amazing businessman. And she was an amazing, I mean, all those other people were like amazing people. And um, so eventually, uh, when I saw that, I immediately started relaxing. Because I thought to myself, you know, there's no way I'm going to win this thing. No way in hell I'm going to win this thing. As a pharmacist going to win this. <laughs> yeah, you know. And it's, all, it's for the butcher. So I, I thought to myself, I started relaxing immediately when I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. There's no chance, huh? Okay. So I enjoyed my evening. I thoroughly enjoyed the evening, man. And when it came, came time for them to call the nominees, they call us to the stage, and all of us get a plaque. And I'm like, just relax. I'm chilling. Right, so right. I know I'm going to win. Right, right. And there they, when they start announcing the winner, the, 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 the Bruce Whitfield was the, um, was the master MC. of ceremony. Yeah. Senior, senior. So then as he's starting to announce, and it's like in a zone, you know? I'm looking at the crowd, I'm smiling and waving. <laughs> then he announces, he starts saying uh, he was a pharmacist and, and, and then it started doing. Like yeah. <laughs> oh my god. And then I realized it was me, man. And then out of sheer shock, I started doing a whole speech. I thanked everybody. It's <laughs> <laughs> you know? so embarrassing, like, oh my god. Time, time. <laughs> no, no, no. Like there's no camera filming me or nothing like that. I'm thanking the uncle that you know. <laughs> you so know? you never saw the timekeeper. No, no, but there was no I was just speaking to people in the room and they're like yeah. not interested about doing my thanking you, you know. It was so embarrassing, thank God, there's no footage. And then eventually uh, I was like one and I was like shocked man. immediately after the awards I went to the judges and I said to them you know, shukran so much, I really, I don't know, I appreciate this so much, but I don't feel like I, I was deserve, worthy yeah. or deserve this honor. You know, custom, I'm not saying that because of, of humility or anything, I, I honestly don't feel like I deserve this thing, you know. And I said to them, like, why, why did you choose me, man? And you know what they said, what they said to me? 
they said to me, it was so close between myself and this other guy. And you know the reason why they chose me? It's the craziest reason. They said to me, when they came to my to visit the store to do the, because they do a walkthrough and all that, they said that um, my staff was so, they looked so happy and they were so friendly. Wow. And what sealed the deal, and they were talking about it in the car was, I've, outside in my parking, I've got a parking attendant there. And the way he smiled and he greeted them, right, was just phenomenal, man. When, because I walked into the car, and, and then I, I greeted the, I, I greeted him with a hand, and I like, I'm a hugger, right? Yeah. I like to hug people. <laughs> so I greeted him, and then uh, we shook, and then the way, they said that won me the award. So wow. never underestimate the small things. Yes, your staff, you know what I mean? And things like that. You Talking know I mean? about your staff, you said when you took the